Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report, sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers. Now, first things first, the state of Oregon and Washington, they decided to extend the Chinook retention fishery, I guess be a way to put it, <laughs> uh, on the main stem Columbia all the way through the end of the year. Now, it was slated to close, I believe, tomorrow, but it's not. It's going to stay all the way open. And for those that are spending their time on the Columbia to this day, uh, there's a lot going on. A lot of people have switched gears or are in hunting mode. A lot of folks are switching from one location to the other to chase Chinook if it's from the Columbia uh, over towards the coast for good reason. October uh, is a, you know, traditionally a very good time to be fishing along the coast for fall Chinook. Now, obviously, most of that fishing is going to be in the bays right now because there's no water. Cross your fingers that that's not the case this year. But uh, if you are still focusing on the Columbia, it's for good reason, uh, and it's for good reason that they left the river open. Now, I believe we're going to get to fish counts here in just a little bit. Not great numbers that are going over, but the river is just full of them. And this is the time of year, at least for myself, if I spend time below Bonneville, which is what I do when I'm chasing salmon around, it's pretty darn good fishing around the river mouths and, and a number of different locations. If it's down low uh, or if it's pushing yourself closer to the wall itself, pretty good options. It's just not great, but certainly a really good opportunity and it really will hold out all the way through November. We were getting really good reports last year into that first week of December. Well, not really good. Just fish being caught close to home is always a good report. Uh, but again, those are certainly some things that you should consider. If you don't want to give up on the Columbia, I wouldn't. The silver fishing has been good and so has Coho and so has the Chinook fishing. Grass seems to be getting a bit better. Uh, we haven't had a lot of wind. Uh, the water's already very, very low. Uh, so that will help with getting some of the grass out of the river itself, although it's certainly going to be something that you have to contend with when you do get out there. Uh, but again, good opportunities. And for those that just kind of want to, and the question came up this week, switch gears and completely just target silver specifically, I, I really just, the, the only response that I would have is you have to focus and pay attention and use Brad's Wigglers. Those are, I'm not going to say more effective than a 360 and, a, and something pink behind it, but it is certainly something that you can target at the upper part of the water column, and silvers love them. And you, you'll still catch Chinook on them, uh, but if you wanted to specifically target silvers in a number of different ways in a number of different areas, I would be trolling those plugs around and be pretty darn confident. Just speed up. I mean, not necessarily twice the speed of what you would be doing if you were pulling 360s around, but fast enough where it might be uncomfortable. They like that. It's just one of those things. Or again, of course, you can stick with your flashers uh, and spinners behind it, whatever it might be, even uh, stuffer baits of whatever kind that you like to run. Uh, definitely some options that are out there. Those would be the ones that I would want right now. Not that the fall Chinook aren't good, but if you want good table fare, mm, the silvers right now are phenomenal. Reports this morning, and I got reports this past week, but none of those really matter. The reports I'm getting this morning from the coast, from two different North Coast fisheries, one just north of the other, come on, uh, pretty darn slow, both areas, loaded with boats though, uh, and overall very slow fishing. You would expect that that would typically be because there's no fresh water coming out of any of the rivers to draw fish into the bays, uh, so it can make things a little bit tough. But things are going to change. We're going to find out from Carly here in just a little, uh, yes, Carly, in just a little bit, uh, what, what is going to change along the coast and here in the valley this next week. And it's darn good. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, uh, it's just something that's going to increase and just get better. Tributary silvers, full swing. In my backyard, folks are just doing, they're doing pretty good. Question is, where can you find them? It's all about water. And if you want to run a drift boat or a raft, might be your best way to go. Uh, a drift boat, you're going to have to pay attention to what those flows are like because all of them are very, very low. Now, if you start heading up into the Washington tributaries, the Southwest, a couple of those systems, they've got water where you can float them or in some cases even use your jet sled. Uh, but the fishing in the tribs has been pretty good. Um, if I had a drift boat right now, which I don't right now, but I will. Uh, that would be one that I'd be uh, spending my time on. Let's go ahead and take a look at fish count. So uh, we are also expanding our river levels just because of what time of the year it is. You can see the numbers going over Bonneville. Only 744 uh, went over yesterday. Silver, though, just short of a grand. Steelhead numbers, 
And that was, a, again, a report. One of my buddies that lives here in Oregon City is over in Idaho right now, and they're just having a heyday uh, chasing steelhead over there in a couple of the different systems uh, for steelhead. So certainly something, if you're over on that side, I mean, I'm a little crowned up. We like chromers down here, but they're still catching some dandies over there, and it should hold out for quite a while. But what this means for us, if, we, if you like to spend your time below Bonneville, there's a lot of fish below Bonneville. They're, and they, never, they don't intend to even go over and if you do decide to fish maybe just a little above Bonneville, this is a darn good time of year to be doing that as well. Pro Trolls, 360s, stuffer baits, spinners, dragging around old school, just a K-16 quick fish will produce up in those areas. Okay, around the Cascade Locks area, down river there, somewhere by the wall. That's a, a fun fishery as well. All right, let's take a look uh, at river level. This will be our first time putting so many river levels back in but again it's october you're going to start seeing tributaries come into the mix we're only a month and a half away where we're going to start talking about winter steelhead and i'm excited about that to talk about something other than chinook uh, i'm getting excited about uh, but you can see the main stem columbia still massive tides very low water overall uh scouting i didn't get out this week but i wouldn't even spend the time i mean really just based on what the situation is depending on where you are I guess. Uh, but it is forecasted to make a little bit of a bounce. I can't see this upcoming weather system making a huge difference, but we'll see how things go. Carly will know significantly more about that than I will. And of course, out of Bonneville, uh, they're staying relatively consistent. These are very good levels if you're going to spend any time uh, up there. Taking a look at some of the smaller rivers, my home river, the Clack, uh, this little bounce. And I'm going to, one of the perfect reasons why we put this in with what is forecasted coming. You're going to start seeing these little bounces in, in the smaller tributaries. Not necessarily that the Clackamas is very small, but still, tributary of the Willamette. Um, any of these bounces, if there's a silver sitting anywhere out in front of a river, bye, they're going to, they're going to work their way up. It's just that simple. You can, you can have a day or two window where the fishing can get really, really good, depending on the system you're in. And remember, lock-jawed silvers in Oregon, it's a thing. You need to be pretty good at it, or at least persistent and time things the right way. Uh, along the coast of Wilson, same thing, just small bounces. You're going to see this through all of them uh, as we even work our way south. The Solettes, same thing, small bounce, uh, but enough of a bounce to where fish get excited. They get motivated to make a move. If they're along the coast, you're going to start seeing fall chinook, even though they're not going to have a ton of water to work with, it's just in their system. They get that stink and they go. Something to consider. If you can get out there, either be off the bank or in a drift boat or something similar, you might have some interesting days here uh, in the next week or so. Uh, keep on working your way through there, Ryan. Uh, or, or is that the end? Okay, okay. I got to get caught up, too. It's the first time we've injected those back into the show. Uh, then, of course, don't overlook. If you want to win yourself something free, send my buddy Jason an email over there at Procure. Jason at Procure.com, and you'll have an opportunity to win that prize pack. It is going to be slanted towards Steelhead now uh, for, I mean, a vast majority of folks that are out there. We got a lot of stuff on our plates currently. But yeah, we're looking real forward to winter steelhead coming up right around the corner. But let's talk with Carly and see what this weather is going to be like. Because for all of us, this is what we're waiting for. And Carly, the more that you get a chance to work with me, you're going to see that we love rain, we love cold, we love snow, and it looks like we got a little bit of moisture coming. Oh yes, I was very excited to uh, join your show today because I knew I'd have some news yeah. that you especially would enjoy. This weekend is going to be pretty sunny, so uh, today, you know, we did see some light cloud cover this morning, but for the rest of the day, it'll be a nice sunny, clear day. Same story tomorrow, save for some in and out clouds throughout uh, the Portland area, but when we get to Monday, that will be our first chance for some rain totals here in Portland and along the coast. And we'll see significant cloud cover all that day as well. Now, rain totals in Portland itself should be pretty light that day as well as on Tuesday, but that will all change on Wednesday and Thursday. So like I said, today and tomorrow, uh, that will be our sunny and dry days. We'll have temperatures in the mid 70s. Mondays and Tuesday, that is when the temperature will drop. We'll be in the mid to upper 60s. Wednesday and Thursday, temperature drops even more. And Wednesday and Thursday is when most of our models agree 
that is when we will see the most significant amount of uh, rainfall there as well. And look, things are getting chilly. We will be in the upper 50s by Thursday. So if you like rain, especially along the coast and here in Portland, we will definitely see that on Wednesday and Thursday. So get ready and uh, yeah, get your get your rain uh, jackets out and your umbrellas, even though here in Portland, that's kind of taboo to have an umbrella. But uh, <laughs> that is what we expect to see. So. Very good. Carly, thank you very much for the good news. I mean, all the way around, uh, for us in the outdoor world, uh, Carly, this is very, very good news for, for, for hunting as well as for fishing. This is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone, we're going to cut to a break. When we come back, we're going to have one of my favorite people that I've had a chance to meet here in the last year, Michael Laffey with the Mill Casino, uh, let alone the casino is just a destination. But the fishing there in Coos Bay and hunting opportunities, if you have that option, is phenomenal. We'll find out how things have been real time with Michael in just a couple of minutes. Don't go. Away. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P Line, because we fish, by Hawken Fishing, perfection in fishing gear, and by Haxton's Canvas and Upholstery, the trusted name of the Pacific Northwest.